two cockpits, two engines, two fuselages, and a record-breaking range. The PF-82 twin Mustang wasn't just an extraordinary looking plane. It redefined what a fighter aircraft could achieve. Born from the need for a new kind of aircraft, the twin Mustang combined power, speed, and endurance to become the last and greatest piston-powered fighter. And yet, if it hadn't been for the vision of German-born engineer Edgar Schmud, the PF-82 twin Mustang might never have existed. Edgar Schmude was born in Germany in 1899, at a time when aviation was just kicking off. By the age of 13, he'd become so captivated by machines and the possibilities of flight that he spent countless hours tinkering with mechanical parts, building model airplanes, and studying the latest in aviation developments. Though very little is known about his formal education, Schmude's natural talent for mechanics, combined with his relentless passion for aviation, set him apart from his peers. And this unique blend of skill and curiosity would eventually go on to shape his career and leave a lasting mark on military aviation. In the early 1930s, Schmude, seeking greater opportunities to apply his skills, immigrated to the United States where he joined North American Aviation, a top aircraft manufacturer of the time. There, Schmude quickly rose through the ranks, becoming one of the company's most valuable engineers. However, his real breakthrough came during World War II, when he collaborated with the British Air Force to develop the P-51 Mustang. Schmude's work on the P-51 Mustang not only showcased his ability to balance speed, agility, and endurance, but also earned him a reputation as an engineering genius. His success with the P-51 caught the attention of the U.S. Navy, who needed him to tackle their biggest challenge yet, a long-range escort fighter. In the 1940s, as World War II intensified, the U.S. Navy faced a serious problem. Unlike the European battlefields, where bases were relatively close, missions over the Pacific spanned vast distances, pushing the limits of the planes available at the time. Fighters like the P-51 Mustang were outstanding aircraft but their range was limited. When bombers needed to reach distant targets deep in enemy territory, these fighters couldn't always stay with them, leaving the bombers vulnerable for long stretches. Mid-air fueling wasn't an option either, so fighters often had to turn back, leaving the bombers to fend for themselves. The military needed a solution. They proposed a new kind of plane, one that could fly for hours without stopping while still packing the speed and firepower required in combat. But who was going to build it? Recognizing Schmude's success with the P-51 Mustang, the U.S. Navy reached out to North American Aviation for a solution. However, it was Schmude and his team who truly had the Navy's attention, and they didn't disappoint. They responded with a bold concept. What if two fighters could be combined into a single aircraft? This twin fuselage design would provide the extra fuel capacity needed for long-range missions and allow two pilots to share control, making marathon flights more manageable. And just like that, the vision for the PF-82 twin Mustang was born. Designing the twin Mustang wasn't easy. Unlike traditional planes, this aircraft had two separate bodies called fuselages, each with its own cockpit. Think about it as if you were joining two planes together. But the problem with this is that it made the plane unstable and inefficient, something previous twin fuselage design struggled with. Schmude's approach was daring, but it wasn't the first attempt at such a design. In 1943, German aircraft manufacturer Messerschmitt tried a similar concept with the BF-109Z which combined two fuselages to carry more weapons and fuel. However, it faced stability and structural issues, and the project was eventually abandoned. Another example was the Italian Savoia Marchetti SM-92, a twin fuselage heavy fighter with similar stability problems. These early twin fuselage designs had promise, but were hard to stabilize and too heavy to perform well. Their challenge was therefore to find a way to balance two fuselages in a way that kept the plane steady and efficient, two qualities previous designs lacked. 
This meant that instead of copying old designs, Schmude and his team had to rethink nearly everything to make sure the twin Mustang would work in combat. Balancing the plane was the most challenging part. With two fuselages, if the weight or shape wasn't perfectly aligned, the plane would lead to one side or shake in the air. But they were able to solve this by carefully positioning heavy parts, like fuel tanks and engines, in the right places to keep the plane balanced and straight. They also ensured that each fuselage was equally aerodynamic meaning they designed both to cut through the air evenly so that one side didn't drag behind or push forward. They also reinforced the wings and central section to handle the added stress of carrying two fuselages. Finding the right materials and design techniques allowed them to keep the plane durable without adding unnecessary weight. However, they didn't just focus on structure. They also addressed the unique needs of the military's mission. You see, the twin Mustang wasn't just about more fuel. It was about keeping two pilots fresh on long flights, giving it a strategic edge and endurance that early designs lacked. By innovating with the layout and focusing on practical needs, they created a plane that was ready to succeed where others hadn't. On June 15, 1945, the PF-82 Twin Mustang took its first flight. However, by the time it was fully developed and ready for combat the following year, World War II had already ended. The PF-82 Twin Mustang was a remarkable engineering feat, unlike any plane before it. Each fuselage had its own cockpit with full controls, giving it a unique advantage. For shorter missions, one pilot could fly solo. For longer missions, two pilots could work together, taking turns to rest and stay alert. This was a critical setup for those extended flights over the Pacific. Powered by two Packard Merlin V1650 engines, the twin Mustang could reach speeds over 460 miles per hour, making it one of the fastest piston-powered fighters of its time. Alongside its speed, it had a remarkable range. The aircraft was capable of flying nearly 2,000 miles without needing to refuel, a record for piston-powered fighters that still stands. But speed and range weren't the only things that made the twin Mustang effective it was also heavily armed. The plane carried six 50 caliber machine guns mounted in the center wing. This configuration allowed it to rip through enemy planes with ease. The plane also carried rockets and bombs, making it versatile enough for both air-to-air -air combat and ground attack missions. This mix of speed, range, and firepower made the PF-82 Twin Mustang an extremely effective weapon. The Twin Mustang was officially ready for service in 1946. However, with the war over, it didn't fly the Pacific missions it was designed for. As the Cold War began, the PF-82 found a new purpose. It became a key player in defending American airspace and supporting early operations in the Korean War. On June 27, 1950, a PF-82 scored the first aerial victory of the Korean War, marking the last time a propeller-driven fighter engaged in combat for the U.S. Air Force. This achievement marked the end of an era as jet-powered aircraft took over, but it underscored the enduring value of the twin Mustang's design. During this time, the PF-82's primary role was as air defense interceptor. Equipped with radar, it could perform night missions and intercept enemy aircraft, adapting well to the changing demands of the Cold War. The story of the PF-82 wouldn't be complete without the pilots who flew it. The 27th Fighter Escort Group was the only Air Force group to use the PF-82 for its original mission. Although their missions were few, they demonstrated the aircraft's remarkable endurance, flying extended distances that no other prop-driven fighter could manage. Major William Clark, a pilot with the 27th Fighter Escort Group, flew multiple missions in the PF-82 and appreciated its endurance and adaptability. He noted that the twin Mustang was like no other, allowing him to stay airborne for hours without needing refueling while still being ready to engage in combat at any moment. Clark admired the twin fuselage design for its stability. 
saying that it gave him confidence in challenging conditions. Lieutenant Colonel David Robinson was another experienced pilot who flew the twin Mustang, and he recalled its versatility as a standout feature. Robinson described how the option to fly with two pilots made it ideal for extended missions. Switch and control during long flights allowed him to stay fresh and alert, which was essential for both safety and effectiveness. Robinson called the twin Mustang a pilot's dream because of its speed, power, and range, which made it unmatched by any other piston-powered fighter he'd ever flown. Despite its incredible design and capabilities, the PF-82 twin Mustang marked the end of an era. By the 1950s, jet-powered aircraft were becoming the new standard in military aviation. Jets could fly faster, higher, and with more advanced technology than piston-engine planes. So the role of propeller-driven fighters like the twin Mustang gradually faded. However, the twin Mustang's contributions left a lasting impact. It became known as the ultimate piston-powered fighter, bridging the gap between World War II propeller-driven planes and the jet age of the Cold War. So why is the PF-82 twin Mustang remembered as so special? For one, it was the last propeller-driven fighter built for the U.S. Air Force, marking the end of an era in aviation history. Known as the ultimate piston-powered fighter, it represents the peak of what could be achieved with piston engine technology before jets took over. The twin Mustang's unique twin fuselage design, combined with its unmatched range, versatility, and combat success, made it a standout in U.S. military aviation. Its role as both an escort fighter and an interceptor showcased its ability to adapt, bridging the gap between the propeller-driven planes of World War II and the jet-powered fighters of the Cold War. As we reflect on the story of the PF-82 twin Mustang, it's clear that this aircraft was much more than just two Mustangs joined at the wing. It represented a bold solution to a complex problem and demonstrated how innovation can meet the demands of an ever-changing battlefield. The twin Mustang may not be flying today, but it's left a legacy that still resonates in the world of aviation. Even though the PF-82 twin Mustang is no longer in service, its legacy lives on. This aircraft remains one of the most fascinating examples of American ingenuity in military aviation. It represents the idea that sometimes, thinking outside the box, like joining two fuselages into one aircraft, can lead to groundbreaking achievements. The PF-82's design and accomplishments left a lasting mark on aviation history, proving that a plane doesn't need to be a jet to be powerful, adaptable, and memorable.